Doctor Who has had many obscure bits of memorabilia throughout the years, from Tom Baker underpants to a TARDIS tuna, hell, even a cookbook written by Gary Downey. Yikes. But there was one certain product that I was fascinated with ever since I became fixed with the show. And that, in fact, was a certain little tin toy produced by Product Enterprise, a toy that harkens back to a much simpler time. A time where people used to socialise around the table and talk about their day and play outside on an empty road. <sighs> anyway, before I get sidetracked, it is another Dalek product, but this time it's made of tin and has some sort of mobility. Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who review. Today we're going to be going back and taking a look at something from 2003, the year where Doctor Who celebrated its 40th birthday. It was weird to think that fans were still celebrating a long since dead science fiction series, but then again, the fandom was still thriving by this point especially when it came to merchandise. Product Enterprise in particular had the license to produce Doctor Who products, which mainly consisted on Dalek kind, but they made several other items later on. Anyhow, this little piece of tin was in fact the Clockwork Dalek, which is a reproduced item from Codeg, released back in the 1960s during the Dalek Mania hype. But more on that later. So before I ramble on about the history yet again, let's first take a look at the amazing packaging that comes with this. So the Dalek itself is housed in this beautifully coloured rendered and very 60s like artwork with the Dalek on the front and on the sides with the text stating that it's strong clockwork with realistic action which is very eye-catching, you know, I'm not gonna judge. You also have the diagonal text that reads Clockwork Dalek as well as a BBC logo in the top right corner as well as the Product Enterprise logo in the bottom right corner. Another little detail on the box is that it states that this item is not a toy, but a collector's piece. Sorry, kiddies. Taking a look at the back, you also have a little bit of background information on the history of the toy, as well as a blue sticker indicating that this is the blue variant as there were two versions out there, one with the blue dome and one with the black dome. And yeah, that is pretty much it. The toy itself is kept in a clamshell case to stop it from rattling about inside, uh, but I didn't really want to show that because I couldn't be bothered. So taking a look at the Dalek, it just screams nostalgia. The simplistic design just shows that Product Enterprise wanted to stay faithful to the original design. However, this version is different at the same time as well as being very similar. Now, because I don't own the original Codig version, I can't really tell between heights and the similarities. And the only factor here is that they both share the sort of same skirt section where the hemispheres have been printed on. Other than that, the dome, the appendages, the midsection and the skirt base are entirely new. You know, so it's mostly different. I guess they wanted to give this version of the toy a new lease of life. Another thing to add that the majority of this Dalek is made of tin, just apart from the gun, the eye stalk and the plunger. So starting from the top, taking a look at the dome, it's all been painted in this really nice light blue with the dome lights being painted white. It's very nice and crisp and there doesn't seem to be any paint bleeds in sight. It's very simplistic, so there's not as much details on the dome lights or anything like that, but again, we are talking 2003, and the facts, it still looks cool, even though it's simplistic. Moving on to the eye stalk, you have all of the rings being painted in the blue, with the stalk itself being painted in silver. The eyeball itself has been painted black, with the pupil being painted white. Again, it's all very nice and crisp. And then moving down to the neck bin, the base has been given this gloss black, so with all the little black sections. Sadly, there's no mesh detail here, but it still looks nice, with all the little rings and the little holes going down the sides, all being painted in silver. It's a nice little bit of attention to detail here, and there isn't a paint bleed in sight. 
And now swiftly moving on to the midsection, as you can see, it's more based on the early appearances of the Daleks, hence why the solar panel slats are not present on this toy. But saying that, neither did the original. So as you can see, you have the bands here that have been painted in the gold color with the main part being painted in a black gloss. It just contrasts so well between these two colors. It just looks so awesome. I mean, I'm really getting Chase Dalek Guard vibes here going on. It just reminds me so much of what we saw in that episode, even though it was in black and white, but come on. And then taking a look at the gun, it's been beautifully replicated to how they were on screen in the 60s with all the little discs going up the barrel. And it does seem to be rather long. Hell, it's almost as long as the plunger arm itself. Same goes with the plunger arm. That itself has also been painted silver with the actual plunger being painted in a matte black. Now taking a look at the main attraction, well, in my eyes anyway, we have the skirt. Now, you would think in an age where toys are much more detailed and you've got vacuum forming and 3D design, e even though that was a bit later on, they'd probably do something a bit more than just having the hemispheres painted on. But just like the Codeg toy, they have stayed faithful and decided to, I want to say replicated that. And the only paint on this part is just the hemispheres themselves, which have individually either been painted or printed on, I, I think it is printed on to be honest, in the same blue as the dome, with these nice little white crests in each and every one to represent the light reflecting, so it's a nice little detail. It's such a nice little touch, and again, it wasn't really needed, but you know, it's, it's just so cool. <laughs> And then you have the final part, which is the skirt base, which has been cast in black, which finishes off the look for this toy. And that is pretty much it when looking at the Dalek in depth. So briefly taking a look at articulation, it is pretty straightforward. Plunder and gun are on ball joints. The eye stalk can move up and down and that's it. There is nothing else that moves on this toy whatsoever. But there is one major feature that is stated on the packaging that would be so rude of me not to mention. It's of course clockwork movability. The Dalek comes with a wind up key which is quite chunky and has a little bit of weight to it. It's just like one of those types of wind up toys that was produced back in the 60s. To start the Dalek on its murderous rampage, you simply just put the key into the keyhole on the back of the skirt and twist the key clockwise a few times. After that, the toy starts to move around freely, as well as the dome that turns from side to side. I've tried to pick this up on camera, but with very little success. I must say though that the fact that this product is well over 20 years old by this point, that the mechanism that this Dalek has is still in pretty good shape after all this time. The previous owner must have taken good care of it before it got into my grubby little hands. So overall, I must admit, it's a very obscure little product. The fact that Product Enterprise re-released this for fans must have been a godsend for people who may have wished to own an original and this is a very good substitute. Unlike Daple, who re-released the Marks Dalek and was faithful to the original design, I like how Product Enterprise experimented with the idea of redesigning this toy. Although it isn't strictly a toy, it's a collector's item, it was obviously a piece of merchandise that was targeted for much older fans who grew up with the original series and they wanted them to relive their memory playing up with their wind-up Dalek toy. The simplistic design on the skirt just screams 1960s it was, and it was obvious that Product Enterprise wanted to not only be faithful but to give a little hint to the original Codeg model. And that pretty much wraps up this video. If you liked me talking about this toy then why don't you subscribe and like the video or whatever you want to do to support this channel. You know, do what you want. It's a free country. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for future videos. Goodbye for now.